If you're a business owner and you're looking at hiring an employee or determining whether they should be an employee or an independent contractor, what you have to look at is how much control are you going to have over their situation? Are you going to tell them when to come in and leave? Does this person have a license? Are they using their own tools or computer equipment? Are they using yours? Those are the biggest issues that you've got to look at. The IRS on their website has about 20 uh, questions that they ask and you can go look at them on the website to determine whether the person you've hired should be treated as an employee or an independent contractor. It's a very important distinction because if they should have been an employee and you treat them as an independent contractor, you could be liable for back payroll taxes and back workers' comp insurance, which gets very expensive. And if they get hurt on the job as an independent contractor, you could also be liable for that as well. How many days can you rent your house out and not have to report the rental income to the IRS? The answer is 14 or less. A lot of people don't realize that you can rent your house out for 14 days or less and not have to pay taxes on it or report the income at all because it's a special loophole in the law which allows people, especially where people live near the Masters in Augusta or even live in Tahoe here, they can rent their house out for less than two weeks at a time in a year and then not have to pay taxes on that income. It's a special deal. It's one of the few items that you can, you can have income and not have to report it as, as a taxable event. The best way to, to um, deduct your automobile for business depends on what kind of an automobile you have and how many miles you're going to drive each year. If you're going to drive a lot of miles, meaning more than 15, 18, 20,000 miles, I would suggest you deduct it based on the mileage method where you keep track of your miles per a law. And so you keep track of where you're going, what, who you're seeing, what's the business purpose. If it's going to be less miles than that, maybe you would do the actual where you keep track of the gas, the insurance, the repairs, things like that, and you depreciate the vehicle. It also depends on what kind of vehicle you buy. If you buy one for that's over 6,000 pounds, it may be more advantageous to buy one, uh, to, to write one off as the actual method in that year because you get a bigger write-off that first year. If you're a business owner and you're looking to start using accounting software to run your business, I would highly suggest you look into QuickBooks. QuickBooks is a software program that was developed years ago for the non-accountant. It's a very easy software to use. Sometimes you need some help. Our office provides some assistance to get everybody up to speed on the, on the software. Usually it only takes an hour or two, maybe three hours at max to get somebody up to speed on using the software. And, and I, what I found is in almost all cases, using accounting software, you capture all your deductions. Whereas if you just do things out of the checkbook or if you've got commingling between personal and business expenses in your checkbook, invariably you're going to miss expenses. So it's important in my opinion to use accounting software so you can get good financial statements for planning and for management purposes. Now that we, the real estate market has come back some, people are going to start having to sell their rental properties and have a gain on the rental properties. Well, there's some ways you can sell the rental property and not have any taxable gain today on it. One of the ways to do it is called a Section 1031 like kind exchange, and that's where you sell your rental property and you exchange it for another rental property. It could be a commercial property for a residential property. It could be a residential property for a commercial property. As long as you identify the property you're going to buy within 45 days and then you actually close on the new property within 180 days of, of selling the property you, you had, the, as long as you, and, and also you pay more money for the property you're buying, the gain can be completely tax free, but you should talk to your tax advisor to make sure that's going to be so. If you're a business owner, the best time to do tax planning for 2014 is probably in the next few months. I usually suggest to our business owner clients that they start looking at tax planning in August, September, and October because that's when we've had a, a decent amount of the year gone by. We kind of get an idea where 
things are going for that year and we have uh, we can we can project what's going to happen the last three four five months of the year it's a good time to sit down and figure out where your tax liabilities are going to be either they're going to be higher than last year or lower than last year both of them are important because it can determine whether we need to increase our tax uh, payments to the IRS and the state or we need to decrease the payments and not send so much in if you would made less money this year than last year. It's also a good time that we can determine, hey, if we need to buy a piece of equipment or invest in a retirement program or something like that. So the next few months is going to be key to start your tax planning. Purchasing or leasing a vehicle has much, it, it depends mostly on what are you going to use the vehicle for? What type of vehicle are you going to need? Is it going to be a vehicle over 6,000 pounds? How many miles are you going to drive the vehicle? If you're going to drive the vehicle a lot of miles, like over 15 or 20,000 miles a year, I'd probably buy the vehicle because leasing is going to cost you too much with the mileage. Also with the deduction for the vehicle purchase, if it's for business, if you want a bigger deduction up front, you want to buy a bigger vehicle over 6,000 pounds because then you can take a bigger deduction in the first year. If you don't care about that, then a vehicle under 6,000 pounds will suffice. Hi, I'm Chris Mann with your financial fix for the week. I often get, hey, I'm running a business, I own a business, what can you do for me as a CPA? Well, a good CPA is going to ask you a lot of questions about your business, what you're doing, how you run your business, so that they can help consult with you on some of those issues. A good CPA is also not going to just be doing your tax return. They're going to be sitting down with you other times of the year to figure out where you are with your taxes to make sure there's no surprises. And again, asking you a lot of questions about what's going on with your business. A good CPA will also help you get your banking situation set up so that you have the right financing, help you with the banker to, court, to navigate through that whole thing about maybe getting a line of credit or getting some financing for a building or that type of thing. And a good CPA will also help you determine whether your employees are really employees or they should be independent contractors. Hi, I'm Chris Mann with your financial fix for the week. If you're planning on starting a business in 2014, one of the first steps you want to do is get a bank account open separate from your household account. That way you can keep track of all your expenses and income separately than your household um, in, uh, expenses. You also want to consider maybe hiring a CPA to help you set up the business with the accounting and do a business plan and a marketing plan. Those are all important things when you're getting a business off the ground. You also may need to, depending on the type of business and what you're going to be doing, Doing, you may need to hire a good uh, business attorney to help you with contracts, signing leases, things like that that you want to have them review, employment contracts if you're going to hire employees, things of that nature. But, but bringing the right people and, and, and surrounding yourself with the right team is going to be real important to starting a business. Hi, my name is Chris Mann with your financial fix for the week. You're selling a rental property and now this year we might have some people selling rental properties for more than they paid for them and, and so what you're going to have to do is, is similar to the home sale but it's going to be like you're going to have to look at what your basis is meaning what you paid for the property, what you what has been depreciated to date because you're going to have to reduce the depreciation and basically recapture what you've taken in depreciation and then compare it to what you sold it for and that gain is going to be subject to tax. If it's a long term gain meaning you've held the rental for more than a year the, the gain will mostly be long-term capital gains taxed at a lower rate. If it's held less than a year, then it's going to be at short-term capital gains rates and it'll be at the basically at the ordinary tax rates. But you want to keep track of all the expenses you've had in that rental property to, to maybe reduce the gain. Hi, I'm Chris Mann with your financial fix for the week. If you're considering renting out your primary residence um, and moving to another residence, some of the things you got to think about is, is what is the value of the property at the time you rent it because you've got to look at that as your basis for depreciation. So if it's if you bought it for let's say 200,000 back 10 years ago and now it's worth 250,000 today, you don't get to write off 250,000, you don't get to depreciate 250,000, you get to depreciate 200,000 and going forward so that because it has to be the lower of the fair market value of what you or what you paid for the house. Now when you rent out your house, you're going to be able to take the mortgage interest taxes um, repairs, insurance, 
HOA fees, anything like that that you had to do to rent the property out. So it's a little different than if it's just your primary residence where you usually only get to write off the interest and taxes. Hi, I'm Chris Mann with your financial fix for the week. If you're selling your home this year and now that the values have come up, uh, we might have some people selling homes at, at a profit this year. You want to keep track of what you paid for the house, what you all your improvements cost along the way, and then determine what your basis is in the house. That'll determine that. Then you want to look at what you're going to sell the house for. And if you're selling it, if, if the sales price is, is less than $250 more than what you paid for it and you're single, you're okay. You won't have to pay any taxes, provided you've lived in the house two of the last five years because it's got to be considered your primary residence and that's the key, is living in that house as your primary residence for two of the last five years. If you're married, then you get a $500,000 exclusion so you don't have to pay taxes on the first $500,000 of gain. Hi, I'm Chris Mann with your financial fix for the week. Uh, now that we're into 2014, there's not many things we can do to reduce 2013's taxes, but one of them is may, you may want to consider um, uh, contributing to an IRA. You can still do that by April 15th of 2014. If you're a business owner, you can still do what's called a SEP IRA, and that is, is dependent on how much profit you had in your business this year, and it gets calculated based on that. It's around 20% of your profit is the maximum amount you can put into a SEP IRA. Those are two things that you could do now that we're past 2013 to reduce your taxes uh, for 2013, even though we're in 2014. Other than that, there's probably not too much for 2013 we can do. 2014 is when you want to start planning. Hi, I'm Chris Mann with your financial fix for the week. Um, most people ask me why should they have a will or a trust and I talk to them about do you want the state to determine where your children are going to be going if you were to pass on and so that's one of the reasons to have uh, a will or a trust to determine very clearly where your kids would go and where be, they would be cared for in case something happened to you. A trust is important if you have assets because it gives the trustee a way to be able to, to handle your assets and administer your estate if something were to happen to you and it also avoids probate which can be very costly if you don't have a trust at the time you pass on. So those are important reasons to have a will or a trust. I would consider consulting with a good estate uh, attorney in 2014 and making that a goal for, for this year.